Oh, that was weird. <laughs> what Radicum, happened? Uh, don't worry, I just turned on the thing, and then your camera came up first, and then mine popped in. <laughs> I'm like, what the hell? I don't. I've never seen it actually do that before. <laughs> All right, welcome, puppets, to a, a new edition of some number of Geekaboli. This is Media Week. I know that much. Um, we are a week behind because. Um, <laughs> Mouse wasn't feeling quite quite himself last week. Plus, he had to rest up for a wedding, I believe, tomorrow. And I was um, in a very, 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 very angry mood with X Split. So this week, we are trying a new experiment. I'm going to try and do Titus Jesus, and I have to sing at a wedding tomorrow. Well, that too. And so we're going to try this as a brand new experiment. Um, I am doing this in a different recording system, and I'm going to do uh, the final pass in yet another uh, program. So this is going to be really weird if you see strange little glittering artifacts of light or color or whatever flashing around us. That's why. Because this is new. And we'll see how well this goes. But there. There. Um, so we don't have to worry about Mouse uh, going, uh, did you put your thing up, or did you put the logo up, or have I spoiled anything for me? <laughs> because I have no logos. Not until post, post press, or post whatever it's called. Post production. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Hi. Okay, so let's begin. Um, I think I'm up first. Let me see. Yeah, I'm up first. So, um, those who watch us regularly, all five of you, <laughs> may recall, I think it was late last year, um, when uh, we announced that Fox was going to be bringing two Marvel television shows uh, to their channel, one being Legion, which they have done, and the other being Hellfire, based off of the Hellfire Club. Well, it turns out, I guess, they have decided to drop Hellfire, in favor of bringing X-Men, a live-action X-Men-themed television show. They've already put it in order for a pilot. Pilot, apparently, yes, yes, they have. I don't know if it's going to be good, but yes, they have. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not denying you. I'm just denying that this should be a thing. Um, pilot apparently follows two human parents and their mutant child who are forced to go on the run from the government and end up joining an underground mutant network, which almost makes it sound like it's more... Morlocks than it is X Men, but there you go. Um, da, 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 da. Oh please, no, not that, not that at all. No. Oh come on, that theme no, song. No, no, no. <laughs> I have nightmares about that theme song. <laughs> all right, so apparently it is um, more tied into the X Men mythology, um, obviously, than than Legion is. Uh, so we're going to see where this goes. If they pull it off properly, it could it could work in Fox's favor. Um, but if they... What are you, Muck it up. What are you looking for? Nothing. You're so distracted. <laughs> when, when you're talking, I'm at least staring politely at the screen, even if I'm not listening. You're all looking down here. I just dropped something, that's all. <laughs> it's it's is brown it and I don't... You, is it the hand you lost earlier? <laughs> I'm still missing the hand. Wow, that that made green screen go all sorts of funky. Let's not do that again. <laughs> all sorts of what? It made it go all sorts of funky. Oh. I'm carefully watching my language. <laughs> I thought, ah, oh, Drew's going to have to put in a beep again. Nope, nope. I'm watching my language. Okay, so stay focused. Look at the camera. No shifting necessarily. Because <laughs> that makes the green screen go, wee! <laughs> all right, so that's all I've got regarding X-Men or Legion or whatever the hell we're talking about. <laughs> Next topic. <laughs> What's up, wow? Many publishers and retailers have been talking about the oversaturation of the comic book industry. There are some comic book shop owners who are uh, think that one big issue that is contributing to the problem is the um, kind of the deluge of 
e relaunches and major events uh, in superhero titles. So, uh, as part of this uh, part of this article, <coughs> Vanita Rogers, who is a contributor to New Newsarama, published an article there where she interviewed interviewed. Se God, I hope it's it's her. Um, I'm terrible with names, so I think I know who it is, but it might not be her. She went on to uh, interview several comic book owners, uh, comic book store owners, and basically gauge what the effect of uh, events and relaunches had been on sales. Overall, many many of them thought that they do work in bringing new readers in, uh, such as uh, Jesse James, who is the uh, owner of James Comics in Glendale, Arizona. Go by at his store if you go by there. Um, I love you happen to be in Arizona. <laughs> in Arizona, uh, I love it that the fact that his name is Jesse James. Uh, but so other retailers um, said that the sales of the uh, uh, sales boosts on number one issues have been lower recently than they have been in the past, uh, especially since you remember that way back in the day uh, there was a whole time period where Marvel basically started launching new number one issues. But that was back in the eighties and nineties, and at that time that seemed to work well. Um, but however, these guys, uh, these store men and women have been uh, hinting that the um, a reduction in the sales is due to the growing number of relaunches for mostly the superhero publishers, which basically means the big two. Uh, <coughs> Ryan Seymour, who owns the uh, Comics Town in Columbus, Ohio, believes that the relaunches have been a massively negative force, with the exception of DC... Sort of. DC has been the most successful of the two. He says that uh, going from the New 52, which tanked sales for DC, to Rebirth, which made DC sales soar again, uh, and these two are focused around you know specific events. Then the, the re um, Rebirth was kind of set up by Convergence the previous summer, if you remember. But he says that the cycle. Overall, in the history of selling comics, has lost its appeal. It does bring in, it is bringing fewer sales. DC seems to have done better than Marvel. Marvel is not doing too well at all. Um, they feel that as many many retailers feel that DC is doing better with those relaunches because they're focused around two events, but. I don't know, uh, since you know the the Marvel soft relaunch was focused around an event. So, who knows? Um, what we do know is that even though reboots and relaunches do seem to be kind of integral to bringing in new readers, the frequency at which they're happening is kind of bringing in a set of diminishing returns. Which doesn't shock me in the slightest. I am shocked. Shocked. All right. Uh, that's the state of the industry. All right. So moving on. Stranger Things. Um, we've got season two to look forward to. And David Harbour, uh, who plays Sheriff Hopper, apparently has recently given away a couple spoilers. Um, I'm, I'm not going to flash the spoiler alert because this isn't like really, really uh, plot, re plot relevant, so to speak. Um, but uh, in an interview with Hollywood Life, he indicated that apparently Sean Astin will be joining the crew uh, as um, the boyfriend to Winona. And uh, apparently the entire, this new season will take place a year after the first season, which makes sense because, you know, it's what happens when you have a bunch of actors who are young and you have to age them up appropriately. Um, apparently, the Duffer Brothers, who are the creators and, and producers for the show, uh, probably lead writers, uh, indicated that they have been watching the internet very, very carefully, and there are a couple of uh, fan theories that are very close to the truth. <coughs> so they said the, the uh, truth is out there, uh, to borrow a phrase from a certain other popular uh, unnamed show... <laughs> You just have to slough through an enormous wall of fan theories to find the one. Yeah, well, that's what happened when we watched Lost, so... The truth was never out there with Lost. They made it up as it went. Yeah, 
They but, had no clue what they were doing. Well, the, the, with Lost, I think what they did is they actually went and found what was the closest to the truth and then said, let's go left. Let's go with this one. <laughs> Quick oh, turn. Oh. <laughs> All right. So that's what we've got for uh, for Stranger Things. Next up, Mouse. Truly, truly outrageously, the wonderful gem comic is going, uh, which is, of course, published by IDW Publishing. I just started sounding very cold, coldy, didn't I? Yes, you do sound <laughs> a, a touch nasally. Um, breathe. Open up your left your soft palate. Connect to your chest resonance. Let oxygen go into the back of your mouth. <laughs> oh, actually, I haven't. I have not sung, and I should not sing because um, I coughed so hard for about three, four days that my erectus abdominis started hurting. Uh, and that's not a good thing. That's not a good sign. You can imagine the punishment my vocal folds received. Because when you're an opera singer, you you can you're capable of a lot of air pressure. Um, so in any case, the um, IDW lovely, um, very it very creative gem comic is <coughs> coming to a close this year. It's going to close by issue twenty sixth. And it's going to be the final part of the truly outrageous arc, which, yeah, okay, good. However, um, they're saying that there may might in fact be uh, an encore planned for this comic. The Misfits miniseries is also ending in April. However, one of the things that we need to keep in mind is that the um, since the Revolution event, Hasbro has consolidated all of its um, all of its comic proper or all of the IDW properties into one universe. They have a shared universe, so you never know where Jim and the holograms might turn up. Gosh, I hope they uh, Cybertron. <laughs> I was just thinking that. That would be Synergy is secretly a transformer. We just never knew. <laughs> I... Stop get out of my head actually. I wanna see I wanna see the fire. Uh... <laughs> uh... You got the touch <laughs> <laughs> ah, so uh for a for a um franchise that has carries a lot of nostalgia with it because it was, was one of the best shafted in the movies i'm sorry that was out loud wasn't it <laughs> yeah it, it was yeah it, it and since um since the movie kind of did a horrible thing to christy mark's legacy because yeah i know uh it Christy Marks was hired by another company to write and come up with Gem and the Holograms, but she made it was cheesy because it was the freaking eighties and it was about a, a a rock band or a pop band. Um, but in its cheesiness, it was inherently wonderful. It's kind of like a Xena Warrior Princess kind of thing. You just have to accept the cheese and have a nice bowl of fondue. I'm, I'm sorry, the nineteen eighties was all about the cheese. If you lived through it, if you didn't get enough cheese, you died. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing. That's how we survived the 80s, just noshing on cheese. Here's my awful, awful confession. I like Howard the Duck, the character, but I also love the Howard the Duck movie. It's a terrible movie. From no cinematic or script writing or storytelling point of view, is this a good movie? It's still freaking awesome. It's so full of cheese and everything that makes the 80s an excess bound decade that you just have to sit back and enjoy it. And it, it hits you right in the face in the first 10 minutes with the duck boobs and it doesn't go and it never pulls back from there. So that's my awful, awful 1980s confession. And I also loved Gem and the Holograms. Surprise, surprise. Like I said, my parents were in total denial when I came out of the closet because uh, I would watch Gem and the Holograms, Punky Brewster, and My Little Pony, followed by Rainbow Bright every Saturday. I was to say, wow, everything but Rainbow Bright. <laughs> and then, and then on Did Sunday, the strawberry shortcake. No. Oh. They, they didn't have strawberry shortcake. Oh, uh, bummer. Uh, we didn't get that. We didn't get strawberry shortcake. We did get the Linda Carter 1970s Wonder Woman on reruns, and I watched that religiously. So if you take all of that, you know, encapsulate that, so you have you have <laughs> you will have to come to the conclusions that my parents were either sniffing glue or were the most totally oblivious people on earth when I came out of the closet, because they were shocked. 
He came out of the closet because he was done redecorating it. <laughs> <laughs> so, in any case, um, good for the Gem and the Holograms uh, comic book. Even though they had to contend with the bad faith that was created by such a terrible, terrible, awful, my God, why do they even make this movie? Uh, they managed to last 26 t- <coughs> <coughs> 26 issues plus annuals and specials over 650 pages um, in total of their run. So they've had a very successful run and hopefully they will have another one in the future. Stay outrageous, girls. Truly. (laughs) Truly. Outrageous. So anyways, next topic. um, Not so much a topic as 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 a... Theory I'm going to just toss out into the internet and see if anybody pays attention, all five of you. Um, there has been a lot of speculation uh, regarding the uh, episode eight of Star Wars uh, and the fact that they recently released the new title, which is The Last Jedi. So apparently, uh, as always, everyone just starts speculating, what What does this mean? You know, Last Jedi, is this, is this Rey? Is this Luke? Is this whatever? They uh, and, so- and, 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 and you've seen, of course, the edits where The Last Jedi, no, wait, we found another one. <laughs> well, the thing is, is they went so far as to, like, take the uh, announcement and the, and the uh, trailer, pardon me, the posters, and go to other countries that actually use uh, gender-specific pronouns in order, and, and uh, plural versus singular in order to determine whether this is meant to be a male singular Jedi or plural of Jedi or female. And apparently the, the consensus was that it was in fact male singular. So they are, their current speculation is that this is regarding uh, Luke. However, something I brought up uh, on emergency awesomes channel and I, and I hope that they run with this. I haven't seen it brought up anywhere. I think you're all focusing on the wrong word. Y'all are focusing on Jedi, and you should be focusing on last. Because right. Luke's gonna die. Well, no, that's not the that's not the theory that I'm that I'm putting forward here. Um, by the last, everyone is is focusing on the concept of the final. I think you need to lo- focus on another definition of the word last, as in previous. Because if you look at Rebels and you look at all the speculation about the forthcoming uh, possible Boba Fett and the Han Solo movie and all those other movies, there's always been a long question of where is the Obi-Wan movie? And there, they, it's been said that he's not getting his own solo movie because his story is about to come out. And who was the previous Jedi? Obi-Wan. Obi-Wan Kenobi. So it is theorized, one of the theories is that Rey is a Kenobi. And that, in fact, uh, she is not only a Kenobi, she is um, Mandalorian royalty. If you go back and take a look at, I forget what her name was, um, Selene? Serena? I forget. I prepared my notes Two weeks ago. Sorry, guys. <laughs> but you can find this theory anywhere on the YouTube, I, I, can, I assure you. Um, but if you go back and look at uh, Clone Wars, which is canon, um, Obi-Wan had a relationship with a Mandalorian um, noble. Even though? Who was unfortunately cut down but there by, by uh, Darth Maul. But uh, there was a period of time before the, you know before she died, where they could have done things. And so I'm just gonna throw, I'm just throwing it out there. It's entirely possible. So there's my conspiracy theory, my tin hat concept of the week, which I think we should do more often. <laughs> <laughs> um, conspiracy, conspiracy, geekamole. Yeah, conspiracy moly. <laughs> uh, but that's all I got on Star Wars. Next for you. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. Oh gosh, I just had that flashback to the to that Family Guy scene. You know which one I'm talking about, right? 
I don't watch Family Guy that much. I'll show you later. Anyway, so Eminent Press, they're a newcomer to the comic book world, but they have several projects lined up for 2017. Among one of them is Terminal, which is a loose, collect a loose connection of stories with a sci-fi, sci-fi noir bent. Um, unfortunately, they're currently funding it through Kickstarter. They have a $20,000 goal. $20,000 goal. And they have three days to go as of this video, and they've got seven thousand two hundred ninety one dollars yeah it's not gonna get funded um which is rather sad because they meant um they meant for this to be a sort of short story collection in a comic format that would help indie writers and artists get onto the indie scene which is not very easy um so this kind of makes me sad i love science fiction stories science, especially science fiction noir which if you're not familiar with the term, think Blade Runner. Um, or its forthcoming sequel. Can we pretend that's not a thing? <laughs> I do that just to get the reaction out of him. Can, can we get President Trump to sign an executive order forbidding a sequel? Mm, nah. I'll, get, I'll, get, I'll get behind that. Eh? Mm, yeah, yeah. That sequel <laughs> must not happen. That's the perfect... The, Blade Runner, the, the director's cut, not the theatrical release... In my opinion, is one of the most perfect stories in cinema. It is perfectly self-contained. It needs no sequel. We don't need to know if Deckard lives, or if Deckard is indeed a replicant or not. Oh yeah, spoiler, spoiler for a thirty-year-old movie. <laughs> um, but you'll yeah, excuse me if I don't bother putting the spoiler yeah. <laughs> alert for that. But yes, so Blade Runner really was as uh, as far as visual and style, the defining. The, the 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 genre setter setter for the sci-fi noir look and i think it's been one of those sci-fi subgenres that has been sorely underrepresented and i would have really liked to see this project succeed i don't know if they're going to continue finding alternate ways of funding the project if the kickstarter is not successful i hope they are but for now um i'll just sit and watch and hope all right, next up for me then, Axnar. We're gonna st we're gonna do a drinking game. <laughs> Every time I say Axnar, you take a shot. I would join you, but I don't have my sake with me. It's in the other room. Sorry. <laughs> so apparently, um, last was it last year. Yeah, it was June of last year, I believe, when uh, CBS and Paramount basically said, "Hey." Here are the requirements for you to have a Star Trek fan film which doesn't infringe on our copyrights and won't piss us off and make us come after you for billions and billions of dollars. And they put that out there and unfortunately, Axnar had already gone over all of them. By far. Just with Prelude. Let alone the actual plans for Axnar itself. However... Just recently, Paramount, CBS, and Alec Peters have finally come to an agreement to resolve their lawsuit. So now, they at least they didn't have to go to trial. They, the trial would have gone forward uh, the 31st of January, so it would have happened just last week. Um, but according to a joint statement, quote, Paramount Pictures Corporation, CBS Studios, Inc., Axnar Productions, Inc., and Alec Peters are pleased to announce that the litigation regarding Axnar's film Prelude to Axnar and his proposed film Axnar has been resolved. Axnar and Mr. Peters acknowledge that both films were not approved by Paramount or CBS and that both works cross boundaries acceptable to CBS and Paramount relating to copyright law. Goes on further to say, Axnar and Mr. Peters have agreed to make substantial changes to Axnar to resolve this litigation and have also assured the copyright holders that any future Star Trek film, probably fan film produced by Axnar of Ms. or Mr. Peters will be in accordance with the guidelines for fan films distributed, distributed by CBS and Paramount in June of 2016. Now, if you're not completely plastered... <laughs> You will be soon. Um, if you're not... Uh, that, so, we don't know quite what this substantial change is, are, is going to entail. Um, I mean, obviously, you've got a very Klingon-heavy, Starfleet-heavy, uh, incident-heavy 
thing that re you know refers to a, an incident in Star Trek canon. Who knows? Perhaps they gave him permission to make it an alternate timeline. Yeah, you can always go with an alternate timeline. Yeah, but they they have to give him permission for that. So, you know, it's kind of like it's kind of like. Star Wars' extended universe. It's an alternate timeline now. It doesn't really exist. Yeah. So, there you are. I want to say it three more times just to get you buzzed. Axnar, Axnar, Axnar. <laughs> and Mouse, last but not least. So, um, about two weeks ago. No, well, last week ago. Well, yeah, right now it would be two weeks ago. Uh, what about two weeks ago? Representative John Lewis, as you know, made a comic book, worked on a comic book called March, which is, of course, focused around the civil rights era. It's, a, it's basically a, his graphic memoir. So <coughs> the final book, which is uh, book three, has won four different awards at the American Library Association's midwinter meeting. And the, the book was co-written by uh, with Andrew Aiden, I think that's how you pronounce it, uh, and the artist was Nate Powell. It uh, it won the uh, Coretta Scott King Award, which recognizes African American creators of books for children and young adults. The Prince Award, which uh, is for the best uh, young adult books. The Yalsa Award for best young adult nonfiction, and the uh, Robert F. Seibert. Yeah, the F Robert F. Seibert Information Book Informational Book Award. Uh, none of these awards, funny enough, are s exclusive to graphic novels. They usually go to prose books. So uh, and it also won the previously won the National Book Award last year. So good for the, good for good for Representative John Lewis. And you know that's that's giving comic books some extra prestige right there. <laughs> And that's all we got this this uh, this this episode this week. This thing, I'm sick. This whatever. So notice no Wonder Woman news. Even though I could have. I, 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 is this the part where I have to put a picture of hell frozen over? I did that intentionally. <laughs> mostly because the mostly mostly because the only Wonder Woman news this week and last week were not really newsworthy that basically the toy line has confirmed that Aries and here, is... and here he goes making the Wonder Woman news <laughs> I'm not I'm only commenting on uh, why uh, I uh, didn't make it a news and, uh, uh, <laughs> and then so commenting bringing it up anyway so that's all we've got this week we will be back next week with our games edition and uh, that's that's all uh, so 